I believe what this little cross stitch mask says on outside South Kensington, which I did at the time of Occupy. So I was in South Ken instead of St Paul's. And it says, evil flourishes when good people do nothing. And I think that that's true. I think people do want to do lots of stuff, but they're nervous to do it. So I want to talk about my journey into it and some ways that I've tried to engage other people and myself that you might get something out of at all. Maybe, maybe not. This is me with a mullet that my mum cut into my hair. <laughs> Very embarrassing. Um, I'm from Everton in Liverpool. Grew up in a Thatcher government under a militant council. So of course, when I was even in the womb, I grew up as an activist in local meetings, squatting in local good housing to save them. And I've always been an activist very much. I'm really passionate about helping people fulfill their potential, whether they live down the road or whether they live on the other side of the world. And I've seen very hardworking people not being able to fulfill their potential for lots of reasons, which makes me very angry. Um, so, as an activist, I was going on lots of marches, I was meeting MPs, I was voted head girl in school to campaign to win lockers, which we won because we got the help of a caretaker. We got recycling in the school because we got the help of one as a receptionist, um, which showed me if you get really powerful people in unusual places, you can win campaigns. We also campaigned to eradicate gym knickers, which we lost because one of the PE teachers was very stubborn. So from an early age, learned a lot, did all the stuff at uni, was very lucky to work for Christian Aid, Oxfam and Indifford Projects, so I know some lovely people here. Um, but also after a few years of working in the NGO sector and campaigning in my personal life as well, I quickly realised that I didn't really fit into an activist mould and got completely knackered that I thought I'd have to give up being an activist because I was exhausted, but I didn't want to give up fighting for a better world. So being the stubborn activist I was, I was trying to figure out how I could enjoy activism. I'm more of an introvert, which is why my voice is shaken, and I'm scared being around all you people, so it drains me being in lots of meetings and being on the streets with people. I don't really like dressing up or telling people what to do or demonising them. I love reading Vogue every month. I don't read, ride a bike. I'm not vegan. There's lots of reasons I didn't feel like <laughs> I fitted in. And at the same time as feeling exhausted, I got into cross stitch because I was traveling a lot with work and I had itchy fingers because I wanted to paint or do something creative and not just be on my phone. And I got into cross stitch and I want to um, tell you three ways I think a spoonful of craft can help the activism go down and hopefully you'll agree with me by the end of it and all become craftivists or at least try and give me some feedback on how I can do this crazy thing that I'm doing. Um, so the first one is that Straight away, it slowed me down. I got away from Twitter, I got away from work. I stopped reacting to things that I cared about and started thinking more strategically and reflecting and meditating and um, yeah, really thinking about the victims, the persecutors, who to target, how to target them. All that stuff often we don't get time to do because we're on so many devices and we're doing so many things. Cross Stitch was the only thing that slowed me down and made me less anxious and less distraught about the, how awful the world can be. And if you don't believe me um, about how craft can slow you down and help with that personal transformation, which is benefit number one, personal transformation, and really thinking deeply about what it means to be a global citizen, as a consumer, as a voter, as all of those different things, one of our craftivists put it much better than me, which is saying that a small act of craftivism will hopefully go some small way towards changing the world, but more importantly, it's changed me. And if we can't change ourselves first and have strong roots and foundations and knowledge, then we shouldn't dare try and change anyone else. I didn't coin the term craftivism. It was coined in 2003 by a woman called Betsy Greer, who knitted and saw that people were knitting together and having conversations, but wasn't doing any activism. So I asked if I could do some craftivism projects I was coming up with, and she said I could. So I run the Craftivist Collective and do lots of projects, but I didn't coin the term. And she says everything and anything is craftivism, and I disagree and say activism needs to be the priority and the craft comes second. So I'm in this really weird world as well, which I can talk about over over a gin and lemonade if anyone wants to buy me one. <laughs> Second benefit I noticed was as a local campaigner and lobbyist, I was telling my MP what to do and not really engaging with her and her office 
contact me saying stop sending all these petitions, it's a waste of your time, our time and charity's money. So I decided to embroider a, a handkerchief saying don't blow it, use your power and influence for good. I know being an MP is a big and a tough job but I'm here to encourage you to help the most vulnerable people in the world um, and all of that stuff. I've got an example outside you can read because you can't read all my words. And it's over my own handwriting and I asked Tamita and I gave her this with no agenda and said Jane Ellison, who's my MP, we don't know each other. I've been emailing you. I really care about the issues I'm talking about. I want to understand what your motivations are to be an MP and how we can work together and how we can understand each other's differences. And by giving her this timeless message on a handkerchief, she started opening up about how she used to work for John Lewis. So now I always talk about small scale cooperatives and how brilliant cooperatives are, aren't they, Jane? You know John Lewis as well, good how she really cared about FGM and didn't really tell anyone until it got lots of momentum from Shoreditch Sisters and a project we did with them and a few others and how we can work together much better. I'm known as the hanky girl in her office, which is embarrassing, but I've really, it's really about trying to build up being good critical friends rather than aggressive enemies and I think craft is one of the few things that can do that because it's small and delicate and timeless and physical and it, it clearly shows I've spent hours making it because craftivism takes hours and it's slow activism. And the third thing is that it reaches audiences lots of activism doesn't, which is what we're all trying to do. So whether it's doing small things that are street art that people get excited about sharing because it's not in their face or whether it's on chairs to get people to stand up if you're doing craft outside in small groups, I've got a little book I can show you about how we get people to do stuff in small groups. Because you're not saying to people, look at us, ask us questions, we're just focusing on craft and chatting to each other, people come up to us and ask what we're doing and then we can have much longer conversations with them. We get to work with places that, I used to work for Oxfam and we couldn't work with a lot of these groups and I get to work with them um, and engage these audiences in what we do, which can be huge. Oh, and Josie Long, she just popped up because we worked with her. There were six of us on stage for six nights at sold out shows in Soho a couple of years ago. And we're getting lots of media, again, um, because it's really good. So, and we sell stuff, and we do loads of stuff, and thanks for letting me waffle.